Hi, my name is Ryan Navarro. And I'm an applications engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. In this video, I wanted to show how we can create interactive SVG documents with SolidWorks Composer. So this would be content like you see on the screen here, where we have vector graphics. Um, the nice thing about these is we can zoom in and we don't get any pixelation or anything like that. It's true. Uh, lines and arcs are represented in the image unlike a JPEG or any type of raster image where it'd be made up of pixels. Now, one of the other benefits of these vector graphics is they're viewable on pretty much any platform. Uh, the, any modern web browser should be able to open them. And also the web browsers on all the mobile devices I've tested are able to open them. And you can actually make them a little bit interactive where I can actually have different areas of the uh, product here highlighting and then I can set up hot links. So as I click on any of those areas, it'll bring me down to kind of a child level where I can see things like a bill of materials. I can get some dynamic highlighting. I can choose to either go deeper into additional subassemblies, or I can click on these thumbnail images here to move back up a level uh, and go back to kind of the home position here. So this is a great type of content you can produce. You might've seen other interactive documents we can produce like the composer player where you can actually spin the model around in 3D. This is a little bit less interactive because we don't actually get the 3D model. These are just 2D graphics that are on display here, but we can still have some interaction with the user, um, help identify parts and things like that. And it's really lightweight. You don't need to install any special applications or anything to run it. Now it does require a little bit more setup work inside Composer, and that's what I wanna show you here today. So we'll make an instruction like this from scratch. Uh, well, actually from a starting point here, we'll start off where we have the individual views created. So I have kind of a nice overview image here. I have an exploded view of the first subassembly, and then the second subassembly that I wanna go down to that level. Now to prepare these for an interactive image, what I'll set up is what's called hotspots. So from your assembly tab in Composer, you might see anytime you select on a component, you have the option to create a selection set, which allows you to easily re-reference it, or a hotspot. Okay. So if you have components grouped logically into a sub-assembly, um, that's great, but if for ever, any reason you, you don't, like here in this case there were some multi-body parts, they weren't uh, grouped together the way I wanted. I had already created some selection sets here so I can easily select things like the tail boom, the wings of this, this RC plane here. Um, so they can be very handy so you don't have to, to remake those selections. And it's a similar idea to create a hotspot. We just select the geometry we want. Like here I can select my, my front sub-assembly and just choose to create a hotspot. If I click on the hotspot, it's going to basically capture all those regions as a highlightable area. So I'll call this uh, front nose. And inside this hotspot creation, down here I can put in a tool, a tool tip, which will be what shows up if the user hovers over it. So in the tool tip, I'll write maybe front nose subassembly. We can also control here the color that will actually highlight when the user's working with it. And the key thing here is this link function. This is what's going to actually control what happens when they click on that hotspot. So by default, nothing will happen unless I put something in this link. And this is where to create these interactive SVG files, you really need to come up with a file naming structure and be diligent about preserving those file names. So let's say I'm going to call this view my overview. It'll end up being called overview.svg. Um, for the child subassembly that we click on, I might call that front nose. So I'll put the link to front nose.svg. And I just like to use a relative file path, meaning I don't browse out to my C drive or anything like that. By keeping it a relative file path, as long as I keep those files together, then you can move along, you can even put them up on the website. As long as they're all stored in the same relative path to each other, uh, you won't have to go in and edit any links. So I'll set that up as the front nose there. And I do should mention too, I like to not have assembly selection mode on when I create these hotspots. I've just found it's best if I'm selecting all the components individually. 
So you might have seen I had other hotspots created too that, that weren't actually linked. Um, so I could create them here as well, like for the tail boom, for instance, I could click on that and say create a hotspot there and call this the tail boom subassembly and we can just leave the link blank. So that, that would just allow the user to hover over and see what that particular uh, thing is called. We can even see it here if I hover over, it says tail boom subassembly. So now we're expecting when the user clicks on this front nose, it's going to bring them to an SVG file called front uh, front nose.svg. So we need to work on creating that. So I can go over to my front clip section here is what I had called it in this view. And I do wanna update the existing view I was on there. So I'll come over to this front clip and really, if I want to be diligent about my naming, I should I should name this the same thing as the SVG file I'm going to create. So this other one can be my overview. Uh, this can be my front nose, and this can be my front housing, just so we can, again, stay diligent here. So on my front nose subassembly, I want a hotspot that allows me to dive a level deeper. So I'll create one here by selecting these components and choose to create another hotspot and we're calling this the front housing, right? This can be the front housing subassembly. We'll link it to fronthousing.svg. And I need a way to go back up to my previous level as well. Uh, so to do that, what I like to do is drag in a thumbnail of one of my other views. So I can just hold control here and drag the overview image in, place that wherever I like. And on that overview image, there'll be the option also to set a link down here. So I can just scroll down and choose where it says link. And I'll just wanna clear this out and I'll just type in the overview.svg. So when the user clicks on that thumbnail, they'll be traveling back to the previous uh, view option. I'll make sure I update this front nose view with that change. So now we can assume lastly that the user is gonna jump down to this last level, the front housing. Okay, and we just need to provide a way for them to get back. We'll also see the hotspots are enabled here. So we'll wanna turn those off in these particular views because they don't need this highlighting action like that. So I can do that from my assembly tree from selecting that particular hotspot and just uncheck where it says show right here. So those hotspots won't be enabled on this particular view. I'll update the view. That way when I go back to my other view, that hotspot is still enabled. Okay. In this one, for instance, I'd want to disable this other hotspot, the front nose subassembly. So I would go in and choose the front nose and disable it on this view. And update once again. Now I should note too, We'll see something interesting here. Um, when I drag this front nose view over into my final view, my front housing, it comes in with color. And when we render out with the vector graphics, it's up to you. You can include color or not, but I actually plan to render out in kind of the black and white style we saw earlier. So to make sure these images don't seem out of place, I'll change all my views to the silhouette mode. I'll go back to this level here for the front nose and uh, change it to render style silhouette. Okay, we can change the outline style to show more what it will look like in the final version. And I just basically want to get my, my image close to what the final output will look like. Because when we render out with whatever settings I set, it's not necessarily what you see is what you get with the vector vector graphics, right? What I'm seeing on here is basically similar to the raster image that I could generate from Composer. Um, so I try to kind of emulate whatever the vector graphics outputs I'm setting are gonna look like. And I'll drag in that, that view from the uh, previous view there, just holding control, dragging it in. And again, we'll link this one. This one's gonna link to frontnose.svg link up a level 
And I should put tooltips on these too if I want. So there should be the option for a tooltip in here uh, where it says name. To front nose. And we can do the same thing on this one. Click on this little icon and say back to overview. We can maybe make that bigger too. Okay, so now we should be all set up to go. Uh, so all we need to do now is publish out these views with these names we've specified. So I can go back up to my overview level and to publish out as vector graphics, I'll go to my workshops and publish out technical illustration workshop. And under the hotspots tabs, you'll wanna make sure that hotspots are enabled in the vector image output. Now this will allow me to just do a save as, and I'm going to save this particular view. I need to save it as the overview .svg. Click save. And if we were to go to that directory right now and open that up, it's a directory here. I open up the overview.svg. We'll see the particular view we've created with the different hotspots. But when I click on one, it's going to bring me to a file not found because the other SVGs aren't generated yet. And looking back at this, I may want to change the line style slightly. It looks like I wasn't showing my tangent edges. So under outline style here, I'll change to my construction edges and I'll just resave that over. See if I like that output better. Yeah, that's the look I'm after here. Okay, so now we just need to export out the other views. So I can stay right within the technical illustration workshop and activate the next view here. Let's save this one out as the front nose. And I can just stay on a roll here and also export out the following view. Then we'll try opening it up once again. And now that we have all those views exported to the same directory, we should be able to click on one of these links and be brought to that child view. Now, if you do run into this situation here where I'm seeing uh, the thumbnail is working, but the actual image for the thumbnail isn't displaying, I've seen this happen sometimes. Again, we want to keep the file paths relative if possible. These are the types of issues that can pop up if they're not. So a way to correct this is taking a look at that actual directory. We can see that for every SVG that was created that had a thumbnail, uh, there was also created a corresponding files folder that had that particular image in there. And a good way to simplify this uh, storage of the thumbnails is just to create a new folder called images folder. We can see that if I inspect one of these uh, failed links here, by right clicking and inspect in, in Google Chrome here, it'll actually show me that um, images folder is where it's looking for that particular file. So by creating a folder named images folder, and then I'll, I'll just pull the thumbnails into there, just with cut and paste. You can delete those other folders then. Um, I should now be able to just refresh and have that update. So now I have all the behavior I want. My linking up and down my bomb highlighting, as well as the thumbnails to go back and forth to the different levels. And as long as I move this particular folder, if it needs to shift anywhere, as long as I move these documents as a unit, they should always preserve their links to each other. Okay, so this was an overview of how to create interactive SVG documents using Composer. The nice thing is we don't have to do any external programming in another software, but we do need to be diligent about how we set up the file references. Um, the general procedure here I followed was to use hotspots. 
So I'll create hotspots from the assembly tab that represent the different selection areas I want. And I make sure those hotspots are showing on the views that I'm interested in. I'll give them a tool tip and a file link. And the link is just to a relative file name that I'm picking myself that I'm going to export these SVGs off of. And for my subsequent views, when I want to go deeper to the next level, I enable a hotspot. If I want the user to be able to travel up to the previous level, I'll just control drag in one of my other views. And on that view thumbnail that comes in, I'll enable the linking here to jump back to the previous level. Then in your vector illustration options, make sure you're using the settings you want. I encourage playing around with these to get the desired result that you want and make sure also that hotspots are enabled. And if we need to, I'll clean up the directories where these files are actually stored, uh, consolidating the thumbnails into one images folder. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if there's any other areas of Composer that you're interested in seeing us making more videos. Uh, feel free to comment down below.